This is Zestology bringing you the new rules for living with energy, vitality and motivation. I'm Tony Wright and a couple of the things that really play on my mind as I'm walking through London is I love living in London, I love living in central London and in terms of community it's just fantastic. I'm about five or ten minutes away from my home, it's not going to take me long to get home, going out for dinner tonight, seeing friends, been out to the gym today, been walking around, can virtually walk everywhere in London and that's absolutely fantastic. There are definitely certain things about living in London which aren't so good, one of which is pollution and the other of which is electromagnetic fields. And um, it's a balancing act, isn't it? You know, because if I was to move to the middle of nowhere in the middle of the country, then I wouldn't have that community. Today's guest has been on Zestology before, Daniel DeBown. Uh, He's written a book. He actually sent me a book on EMFs that he had written, which you'll hear us talking about today. And he sent it to me before our first interview, and I constantly use it as a source of reference because it's so important, the stuff that's going on. If you're someone that keeps your phone in your pocket next to your crown jewels, you may want to listen to this podcast. If you're someone that sits on your sofa with your laptop on your lap on top of your crown jewels, you may want to listen to this podcast. You may think that I'm talking about crown jewels a lot, Uh, There's a good reason for that, and that is in today's podcast. Um, Electromagnetic fields, how to mitigate the the risks of them, and how to deal with them in the best way possible, because we're all subjected to certain levels of kind of radiation and fields, but uh, we don't want them to adversely affect our lives. So that's it. That's the topic of today's podcast. Definitely something that will help you with energy, short and long term, if you get this right. And this podcast is all about energy, so... Worth looking at that. Here he is, Daniel DeBown, talking energy and electromagnetic fields on Zestology. Daniel, we're recording. How are you? Nice to talk to you again. Tony, thanks so much for inviting me. I really appreciate a chance to chat with you again and, and to the listening warnings you have. Well, your your um, podcast, when you came on Zestology, it was a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, it was one of the ones that's had a real impact on me. And mm-hmm. one of the things, you very kindly sent me one of your um, defender pads for, for the kind of laptop, and I've used mm-hmm. it every day since, and I still use it. And, on oh the, my and, and every once in a while, I'll pick up my laptop and I won't have it. And... God, your lap gets so hot, quite apart from blocking the EMFs and the, uh, yeah. the microwave waves and all the rest of it. Your lap just gets so hot when you forget to put something underneath it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you know, I don't know if you remember, the reason I actually uh, created that product was, uh, you know, a number of years ago, my wife had our sons visiting and they had their laptops on their lap. And, and she, as she said, I want grandchildren you, that can't be good for you. So yeah. she had some intuition that there was a problem there. Yeah. And, and it turned out 25% of the male sperm within a couple of hours is actually immobile. So she was absolutely right. And yeah. so by using that, there is the heat itself coming off the laptop, and that's good to shield if you can. But what you can see is the the signal that's going into your body, it's also heating up the cells, as, as you may recall. The, the the water in between the cells oscillate a bit and you and your skin heats up as a result of it. So it's not just the this the heat from the device, but it's also the microwave that's hitting your body that you're trying to defend. So yeah. I I'm I'm glad you, you like it. I, oh, I, I do. I yeah. That. And I mean, since we last spoke, technology's got more powerful. Um the yes. signal that comes off technology has become uh, stronger and it's probably more ubiquitous as well more of us walk around with a phone in our pocket right next to our crown jewels so it's even more relevant this stuff than it was two years ago really isn't oh, it oh, oh, oh no question about it think about it this way you know if 20 years ago if i if i had a cell phone and i went to call someone no one of my friends had a cell phone they just weren't around they just weren't around us um, devices like laptops and tablets, they just weren't around us. And over the last couple of years, everyone has them. And worse, 
children have them. And, and of course, with children, those kinds of exposures are even far greater problem, given that they absorb three times the signal uh, than adults do. So you're right. It's like all of a sudden it's all around us and it's pervasive. The, the, the question of the dangers of, let's take one example in particular, because nearly everyone listening to this will have one, and that is a mobile phone. The question about how dangerous they are has become something that is increasingly starting to be discussed. I read it a lot online, and I've read a lot recently in the press here in the UK, which I'm sure you get as well, um, yeah. about the links between mobile phones and cancer, for example. And it proves highly controversial because when people say look we think there's a link between mobile phones and cancer for example there's a lot of top experts who will come up and say it's cherry picking it's misrepresentation not all radiation is bad is not a conspiracy these are you're basically cherry picking facts to say that there might be a problem with the technology that we've got in our pockets or around our homes what do you say to that when you kind of read and hear those kind of arguments I have been in research for years and years and years. I think it's poppycock for anyone of any intellectual skill to make a conclusion that it's biased information, cherry picked data. In fact, what I've noticed, uh, Tony, is I've looked at some of the research that claims there's no problem. And I see people referring to um, studies that have been done recently and they, they, they make a claim that, for example, Dr. Paul is out of the U.S. in uh, Portland, Oregon, and he, he's done a breakdown of the cell, just how does it break down under these exposures. And I was reading this scientific report that said there was no problem, and I, they were citing Dr. Paul as saying there's no problem. That is so bizarre. Dr. Paul's whole point is the cell breaks down from... Oxi you know, the oxidative stress that occurs, of course, but but more importantly, it's the calcium that that penetrates the the cell itself. And and that's when you have the DNA and uh, DNA damage and mutated cells. Yeah. So 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 I get upset when I hear the, these arguments that say it's uh, it's not a, a problem. In fact, you know, since we last chatted um there, there have been actually two uh, fairly large studies that were done. Uh, the N National Toxicity Program it, it was in the U.S. They spent $25 million on an epidemiology study. The reason they were doing it is because they wanted to prove, without a doubt, there's no linkage to cell phones. What they did was they, they had these transmitters that they put into this clean environment, in this laboratory environment, and they radiated for extensive periods of time, and they watched... Um, the populations um, died, literally. Um, and then they did autopsies and, and looked for problems. S sad for them, good for us. Yeah. What, they, what they found was there was an increase, statistically significant increase in the, the presence of uh, mutated cells, in fact, cancers of the brain. But it was the frontal lobe of the brain that was that most affected, uh, um, impacted, not the whole entire brain. And, and in fact, if you want to talk about statistics, uh, there's been a 2% growth per year compounded every year for the last 10 years on frontal lobe cancer. So, uh, I mean, I, uh, and, and just on that, I mean, you know, there was one article in particular that troubled me. It was by Naomi Elster in The Guardian. It was about modern myths about cancer. And, and she said... By 2008, mobile phone use was widespread, yet the number of people who got a brain tumor barely changed. And she also quoted the World Health Organization's Interphone study, saying that mobile phones didn't increase your, your chances of getting a brain tumor. Tony, that's what upset me, because if you look at their data analysis, what, what, what they're saying is on the average of all brain cancers, it's been stable over the last 10 years. But if you look at the data on the impact of a cell phone to the brain, it's only to the frontal lobe. So if you look at the data related to the frontal lobe, it's 2% per year compounded every year for the last 10 years. Yeah. So they were cherry picking the data. Yeah, yeah, okay, and, yeah. And, and then 
so the, here was this $25 million study that, that now was statistically significant. What that means is the populations were so large, they, they could say with a level of confidence, a 90 95% confidence level, that what they found was legitimate in general. Well, then the out of York neck of the way, uh, the Razzoni uh, Institute out of Italy and, a, and a, a, a half a dozen other countries did a similar uh, analysis, laboratory lab analysis. And they came up with virtually the same conclusions that there was a frontal lobe cancers related to exposures. Right. Now, wh what I didn't say is that the real surprise was that there was cancer to the heart that was elevated as well. It makes sort of sense because it's the very, very soft tissue that's most impacted from exposures. But really, all of us in the industry, when we heard that it was also statistically significant to the heart, we were surprised. So, so you know, you can argue both sides and you can make Mets claim, but the facts are becoming more and more clear about the impacts of our modern day conveniences and their impact into our environment more so than ever before well and i i agree and i'm really glad that i mentioned that because i wanted you to take it down in that way and you have yeah that that i find very upsetting because it's misleading uh, for a point um and we don't mislead we just simply look at the data um now, now another thing tony that's happening and and i'm sure you have that in the uk as, as well as other parts of the world it's the 5g stuff that's coming along right um, yeah what's is that worse than 4g then uh let me explain i don't recall the last time we spoke how, how yeah. much time we spent on it but yeah. let me explain when when you had um an analog signal um 15, 20 years ago, it was a constant load. If, if, I, if I take a, a, a steel rod and I put 10,000 pounds of load onto that concrete pad, I won't break the pad. So the analog signals 20 some odd years ago was this constant load. And then all of a sudden we had 2G, 3G, 4G come along. What was that? Well, that was where there was, an, uh, they call it a carrier signal, uh, that was carrying a load of data that was on and off, on and off. So all of a sudden, it was an on and off, on and off information being carried on the signal. What does that mean? Well, let's go back to our sample example. If, if I take a concrete uh, pad and, and 10,000 pounds load on the steel bar, and I lift it and drop it down, lift it and drop it down, it breaks the concrete. So all of a sudden we have this situation in which the data that's being carried by the signals, we know have more damage to the cell and the body in general um, because of the way they transmit. So let's fast forward to today. On 5G, you have actually a case in which um, you have a much faster frequency rate. What, what do I mean by that? When, when I talk about cell phones, I talk about one gigahertz, maybe two gigahertz. What is, what is that? Well, think of it this way. If, if you have one hertz, that's one cycle per second. It's a sine wave up and down once right. in one second. If you have one gigahertz, it's one billion cycles per second. Really, really, really fast. Okay. If I were to go and look at the X-ray, that's terahertz. So it's trillions of millions. Guess what? An X-ray, if it's a, open to extended period of time, immediately breaks the cell apart. Actually, it knocks the electron out of this orbit and then ionizes it, and, and it kills you immediately, right? So now that we know that, what is 5G? 5G is projected to be up to 100 gigahertz. So where 
and most of it throughout the world will start off around 20 some odd gigahertz. 20 gigahertz is 20 billion cycles per second. And so that's and that's enough to confuse the hell out of your cells in your body, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it does. And in, and in, in fact, what we know and here's some sort of some facts we know. Um, when, when, when you have that kind of level of exposure, we know from science that the a blood brain barrier of the brain um, it actually gets screwed around with. The faster the speed, the, the faster, uh, it, more likely you're, you're going to be, your body's going to be disrupted. So the closer you are to these kind of gigahertz speed, admi- emitting right. devices. Right. They're, they're exactly right. And so why is that screwing around with your blood brain barrier? Why is that a problem? And, and here's why. A blood brain barrier protects the cells of the, of the brain and, and the frontal lobe more, more specifically. Research we know for sure says that if you have dot one watts per kilogram, that's really, really, really a low amount. It can disrupt the cell. It can mutate and DNA damage the cell. Dot one. Your cell phone that you use every day is 1.6 watts per kilogram. Mm. So when you have a blood-brain barrier not protecting the brain, you can take that cell phone of 1.6 and it can potentially dis- disrupt the brain, of course, and convert that right. energy into a uh, cancer yeah. so these speeds are not good okay um i i mean it's it's really interesting because i remember i can't remember if i read it in your book or we talked about it last time but we talked about x-rays and yep. um i went in i went to a chiropractor a couple of years ago and she said i'm not going to treat you unless you have an x-ray and i said i don't want an x-ray um, yep. and, uh, I rem- remembering having spoken to you, um, and she said, I'm not going to treat you. And I said, I can't believe you're not going to treat me. I just don't want an x-ray. I don't want all that needless, uh, right. you know, EMF and kind of potential cell damage when I actually don't, it's not urgent and I don't need it. And, right. uh, they said, oh, you know, no one's ever refused it before. You can't come here. <laughs> I feel, I feel pretty, I feel I made the right decision. Don't you? Of, of course, because that's accumulative stuff. Yeah. You know, so like if you if you have needless, someday they'll be essential. And the impact of the body, because it's cumulative, could be worsened as a result or weakened even further yeah. as a result. Because if you need an X-ray, you need an X-ray. But if you right. don't need one, there's no point right. in, getting, exactly. in, in, in building the cumulative load of all the kind of electromagnetic fields and radiation right. that you're taking into your body. Yeah, you got to remember when you when you go to the dentist and they throw this really really heavy blanket on top of you and they put this massive thing next to your teeth and they run into the other room. They're not running because they want to get exercise. They're running because it's a X-ray exposure. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, there's uh, there's some serious long-term impacts if it's not managed right. Uh, I've got but, you know one yeah. of the biggest things about the Uh, 5G is that um, bacteria and and, and and viruses, they actually rapidly reproduce. And that's in contrast to the body's cells being suppressed. So like when you start getting exposed to these kinds of things, (laughs) you're actually improving the, the health, the health of the bacteria and virus. And they're more immune to these kinds of things than we are. In fact, there, there's a, um, a Dr. Barry Tower. Uh, you may know uh, of him. He's out of the UK. Okay. He, yeah. He, he used to build um, weapons uh, for the uh, UK. Uh, his expertise was microwave. He used to build war weapons that were microwave signals and so um when i recently was heard uh, him uh, uh, in a discussion he was talking about the 
frequency that's going to start with the 5G is very close to the act, uh, the active denial uh, crowd control tools they yeah. use. I mean, they literally use it to stop people from advancing on them. <laughs> so it's like pretty serious stuff. Yeah, and yet, yeah. That's what's going around. And and by the way, when when the, because these signals don't go very far, they're going to be about 250 meters. The the towers will be about 250 meters uh, uh, separated. Now they're they're like five miles in U.S. miles, um, but they'll be 250 meters. What does that mean? Anybody within um, um, uh, 300 meters of a tower is three times more likely to have cancer. Hmm. So um, is that right? What anyone living? Anyone living within? Anyone living within 250 uh, meters from any tower, cell tower, statistically is three times more likely to have a cancer than those who don't. Wow. So, that's, yeah, I mean, like, bearing in mind, I'm in central London right now, almost certainly within 250 meters of a tower. And, and it's um, and then you have to start looking at measures to mitigate it, which I which I want to come on to in just a second. Just just on that on that point, though, what about the electromagnetic fields from train lines? I was recently um, considering moving house and we, we saw a house for sale and it's very near a train line. Not really that bothered about the noise, um, but would there be quite a few electromagnetic fields coming from the trains or from the lines? Actually, there is. Well, you know, you may recall, Tony, we, we, we spoke about two different kinds of emissions that are contaminants in the environment. Yeah. One is the RF signal, yes. the microwave signal. Yes. Well, well, there's this, this other, which is a byproduct of electronic working. Like you have wires in your house and you have a light bulb lit. You have a radio you play. When, when, you, when you use those devices and there's current flowing in those wires to that device, yep. there is what is called extremely low frequency emissions. Anything below 300 hertz yes. is also an emission. So most times you're fine because these are such low levels. When they're not low levels, uh, near po the power lines for trains, for overhead power lines, particularly at up to 10,000 watts, uh, volts, excuse me. So yeah, you, you, w w when uh, thinking about that kind of thing, it, it, it's conservative, it's uh, precautionary to, uh, avoid those kinds of things mm. but of course th th that house was really nice and it was cheaper because it was near the train line which is why right. it was tempting <laughs> um but and actually i don't think it was overhead cables i think it was like un lines underneath rather than overhead but even so it does sound like those extremely low frequency emissions would still be relevant yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and they're concentrated in those kinds of uh, uh environments mm. So what about mitigating the risk? Because all this so far, it's all been, you know, we, I'm really glad that we've re-outlined the risk because I think it is something that's important. It's something that one needs to be reminded of every once in a while. Um, I seem to remember asking you before about those stickers that you can buy, that you put on a device. And they, I mean, they're very expensive. And it says there's a, a magnetic frequency interrupt from the stickers. And I was very tempted to get one of these to wear on my radio frequency packs at work. And you said, don't bother with the stickers. They're not very good. Is that right. still definitely the case? Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you may recall when we spoke about that. Uh, I, I think anything that can be proven independently that they're, they do what they say they're going to do, that, that you should invest in it. But inevitably, all those kinds of products... They all make a claim, but there's no such thing as evidence to that claim. So it's simple. Show me the science and I'll understand it and I'll agree or disagree based on science. I know of very little, if any, on those kinds of devices that are legitimate. So I just, they don't, they may work, but I have my doubts. Mm. Um, so you, you really should look when you try to get um, protection, um, unbiased, independent, scientific research. L l let me give you an example. 
of what you just spoke about and why I would be slightly suspicious. If, if you have a cell phone, it, it's a very, very, very specific frequency. And it goes to a cell tower. That means it's transmitted in a very, very concise way. And in the, at the tower, they have a receiver that looks only at that frequency so it can receive that frequency and then process it. So if the frequency itself is being mucked around with, you're not having cell phone service because the receiver on the cell tower won't see the signal. So, right. I mean... It, so, it's actually, it's, so that just wouldn't work if, if the work. stickers if actually really worked. Doing what it's <laughs> doing, okay, yeah, it yeah. Work. <laughs> um, and and what do you think? I, I think you guys sell or Defender Shield sells a mobile phone cover that if if you use that, is it then okay to keep it in your pocket as as long as the case is facing towards your leg? That's exactly right, Tony. Um, you know what 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 I you know what started this was protecting my son's. Um, but by the way, I don't have grandchildren yet either, by the way, ah. <laughs> so I built it to, to protect them, but yeah. I still don't have grandchildren. But anyway, <laughs> it was a simple device that prevents the signal from going into the body. Hmm. It allows it to go anywhere else it wants to go, but not into the body. And does that and actually work? Because I would have just thought that it, it would just kind of seep out the sides. Actually, even if it seeps out to the sides, that's fine. Because it's not directly going into your body. Okay. It's when it directly goes into your body that you have the uh, cascade of uh, many, many problems that could potentially be there. So, um, And so with the cell phone, we have a device where we cover the, uh, the front and the part that you use to put your ear. And so you can still connect to the cell tower, but the signal can't go in to the head. And I don't know if you recall, it, a, 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 a RF, a radio frequency, a microwave, uh, these are all omnidirectional. They, uh, if you take your finger and you, and you look at the center of the finger and, and pretend there's a little ball that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, goes into the room, and all these layers of balls going out, out, that's omnidirectional. All we're doing is preventing it from going towards the direction of your body. Right. So it's still connecting to the tower. It's working perfectly fine. But at the same time, you're also protected. That's awesome. What else did I wanted to ask you about? Oh, yes. I've been doing some research, Daniel. Okay. Um, and I've been wearing an Ura ring at night. And I've been switching off the Bluetooth. So there's been, so there's been no signal coming out of it, even right. at a very low level. Is Bluetooth something that you would worry about? Or is that too low to worry about? You now know the facts enough to make a, a smart decision. Remember we talked about yeah. dot one watts per kilogram? Yeah. A cell phone, a, a Bluetooth is dot three. It's three times bigger. Good. I'm than, glad you said that because I'm hot on Bluetooth and I don't want it anywhere near me. Right. You yeah. do not want to use it particularly. Uh, by the way, I we, the, we were talking about blood brain barrier, right? Yeah. Well, we find most of the time that if you have a blood-brain barrier dysfunction, it's highly likely you're electrohypersensitive. Uh, in other words, if you have a concussion and you have a blood-brain barrier diminished, you're also fairly likely to be impacted by exposures from radiation more than the next person next to you, believe it or not. So. When you have a blood-brain barrier breakdown like that, and we know 20% of us do, um, that means you are more susceptible to that dot one watts per kilogram. So when you have a Bluetooth, it's dot three, and it's all day, or half a day, or if you have it in your cell phone, I don't turn my Wi-Fi on. A blue, uh, a blue, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't turn it, I don't turn it on. Why? I, I don't need it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So if you don't need it, don't turn it on. And, and that's the interesting thing about the Aura Ring. You can it's it is one of the few trackers where you can actually switch off the signal and you can put it into an airplane mode, which is great because exactly. I, you know, I'm quite interested in tracking things. Yeah, and, exactly. And, yeah. So that's you can switch, you switch the blue. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what I found was interesting was it measures not just your sleep quality, but it measures a few other interesting things like heart rate and heart rate variability. And right. I have found that. Um, 
so I, I've always put my phone, or for many years, I put my phone into airplane mode at night. Yep. But more recently, I've played around with switching off all the mains and the chargers near my head as well. So yep. charging the phone over the other side of the room, basically. And so right. none of the plugs are on. And when that happens, I find my heart rate goes down. Yep, yep. You know, it's funny you say that because I was talking with, um, I was having an interview. Um, and I was talking about managing bees in the room. What I mean by that is if you have one bee yeah. in a room and it stings you, you won't die. If you have a thousand bees in the room, you can die. Yeah. Now, think of it this way. All the cell phones you have uh, has three to four transmitters. That's four bees. If you have a tablet, that's two or three bees. If you have a laptop, that's a couple more bees. If you have a, a wireless telephone with a station, and, and that's more bees. If you have a router, that's more bees. Yeah. And the trick in all of this is eliminate the bees, particularly when you're sleeping. So I'm telling this story to this uh, interviewer, and and she didn't say anything. She said, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. About three months later, she called me up and she said, you know, I got to apologize. I didn't realize how accurate you were. My husband and I have removed the clocks, the phones in our room, the router that was in our room. And she says, we're sleeping now all night. And I said, yeah, that's because those very, even if it's a very little, it disturbs it, it easily disturbs the melatonin process, right? We know mm, that. Mm. And, and, and so it, it, it disrupt, disrupts your uh, circadian rhythm. There's all sorts of different things that are disrupted as a result of that. So, yes, you really want to have elimination of all bees in the room, particularly when it's in your bedroom. Yeah, bees in the room. Um, and um, what about blue light? I mean, you, you know, you've spoken about disrupting circadian rhythm. Um, blue light is something slightly different, but it's obviously all linked to technology and what it's kind of doing to us. And I've just one hour ago received a parcel in the post from you. Thank you for that. With um, some very smart looking glasses, which block 50 percent of blue light. So what's what's that for? Um, yeah, 50 percent or 100 percent. It okay. depends on your choices. So, yeah. So so this is what's going on um, when you when you go to your eye doctor and you have these bloodshot eyes, and they're always dry, the doctor will say, take these drops, and, and you go home, you put the drops in your eye. Well, that's known as dry eye. Do you know the blue light component of the spectrum is one of the leading ways of disrupting the eye? And so when you put something in your eye, you're not actually fixing the problem. You're just dealing with a symptom. The problem is the blue light component that's coming off your screen on your monitor, on your laptop, on your cell phone. All of the spectrum of light coming off all of these devices em em emit a blue component. That blue, by the way, is you know ultraviolet light. Um, it, it is very close to ionizing signal, right? You know that. So when you have blue, that's right next to ultraviolet. And, and so um, it's a very, very strong, it's the mo almost the strongest, uh, 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 the only one that's stronger is ultraviolet than all the light components. What we do is we just eliminate that component. And if you had dry eye and you put on, and the source of it is from your looking at a monitor, yeah. most likely it'll go away. And of course, this macular degeneration, screwing around with your retina. Uh, we, we know that um, these kinds of technology exposures to our eyes is actually creating premature macular degeneration. And so taking a simple precautionary measure, having a pair of sunglasses, light sunglasses on, really does prevent that component of spectrum that could be potentially dangerous to your body wow yeah 
Um, and uh, I think that it's really nice when you don't have like, you can have your full blue blockers, but also a kind of a very elegant half blue blocker that you can probably wear out and about right. without looking so weird, which is nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. It's stylish. You'll look good in it, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. That's very kind of you. But, 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 but you know, when, when you're sleeping at night, we talked about circadian rhythm. When you're sleeping, when you're in bed looking at your cell phone for an hour, you, you, you're going to Facebook on your tablet. Um, there's those hard problems, the dry eye, the immaculate generation. But then there's the soft problems. It's screwing around with your circadian rhythm. So you can't go to sleep right away. You know, the, the melatonin that normally is operating naturally is starting to be screwed up. And so there's this cascade of other problems, health problems, as a result, a result of that. So at night, if you don't need to, you really shouldn't be looking at this stuff. If yeah. you do, it should be very, very short use. If you must use it long, you really should take precautionary measures and shield yourself from those kinds of emissions. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? Because it's never, it's never like you need to. But yeah. despite the fact I know all this stuff, I know what I normally do. I normally get into bed and have a look at the old phone before I go to sleep, even if right. I am kind of reading. Right. But, um, but I do think blocking the blue light with some kind of glasses is a really, is a really nice idea. Um, so, uh, so thank you for that. Now, uh, something I've asked you before, and I'm going to ask you again, Daniel, is what is one book you would recommend and one tip for living with more energy and vitality and motivation? I'll do the energy first. You know, you know, I, with our pre press days, very, very busy days, it's sometimes hard to rest and relax. And, you know, there are meditation um, approaches there. There are yoga kinds of uh, uh, choices you can make, um, which I do, by the way. Yeah. Um, but um, the one I, I oftentimes, which is a mental thing, is when I want to uh, find uh, rest, I, I think of um, a, a time in my life when I was at the most peace. And I can tell you what it was. I was, I was on the beach. It was six o'clock in the morning. I was drinking a cup of coffee overlooking the ocean. And it was so peaceful for me that um, I've never forgotten that sort of calmness. Well, it turns out any time I do get a bit too busy, not really paying too much attention to my health, I'll often just stop and think about that time. And it helps me relax like like it does with um, the, the meditation you may, yeah. you may choose. Yeah. So and the other one, I don't know if we talked about, but believe it or not, I don't have any modern book um, that I, I have, um, uh, you know, I, I espouse to. It, it's uh, uh, I have so many things I'm doing so much. I often don't have time to read full books. Yeah. But. I got to tell you, one that goes back hundreds of years almost uh, is uh, Little Women. Uh, I don't know why it was, but it was um, a, a book that I read 30, 40 years ago. And I just think of the lives of people and and how they deal with life. And it was so, so uh, obvious um, how they chose to lose their life in, uh, in a very positive way throughout their entire lives and I, i've never forgotten that so little women it's been around a long time <laughs> oh yes i've just googled it, it looks like a so it's fiction and it sounds like it's a very famous american book right yeah, yeah. oh wow it was, and it was about a family you know i'm an engineer right so yeah. like it's not sort of the, the place i typically go but for that book I, I i really did just so much enjoy it and and i got in very much engrossed in, in the lives of these women as they grew up in their lives. Mm. Daniel, thank you so much. I, I genuinely think the work you're doing is so important and I, I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you again. Well, thanks so much, Tony. I really, uh, I, I appreciate you offering uh, and inviting me on. And I, as always, I always enjoy a conversation. It's, yeah, absolutely. It's helpful for your... And where can people find out more about you and also the Defender Shield, the amazing laptop Defender Shield that I, I love and I use every single day? Well, so th there's the book. Uh, that 
the book we wrote was for everyone in general, not the engineers, not the scientists, not the researchers. It's just the common person, uh, particularly women and and um, um, married women, because they're the ones who are trying to keep their family safe. And so Radiation Nation was the book we wrote. And, and it really does describe basics in understanding the complex environment we live in and the environment that potentially is polluting our environment uh, from these kinds of toxins that are in the environment. And so Radiation Nation, you, you can get on our website, which is uh, defendershield.com. And when you get there, we also have a vast amount of products. The last time we spoke, Tony, I think we only had one or two products. Really? But now we, yeah, we, we didn't have that many. Um, um, you know, we had a cell phone line that was starting. We had the Defender Pad, but now we have a a, a, a variety of a products that are really designed just to protect your body. And um, so, DefenderShield.com offers those products, and and you can get a glimpse into the kinds of things we offer from from DefenderShield.com. Super stuff, Daniel. Thank you again and uh, look forward to catching up at some point in the future. Very good, Tony. Thanks again. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, that was just a massive geek out. Just pure joy. Just as I'm walking past a building site trying to record a podcast as well. Oh, well, not going to delete it. Anyway, pure joy uh, geeking out on the electromagnetic fields with Daniel. Thank you to him for coming on. And it's definitely something that kind of, as I said already, plays on my mind. I think it's something that is really worth considering. And I don't think any of us potentially know uh, the long-term effects of things like our mobile phones and our laptops as well so even more worth focusing on too okay that is it the three zesty things newsletter will be going out again next monday so if you want to sign up for that and you don't already get it go to tonywrighton.com and have a zesty week see you soon <laughs>